I see quite a few different ways of people uh, demonstrating kururum kata online, um, which is great, fantastic, share your training. Uh, I do want to point out a couple of things, if I may, that could be helpful. So I'm only going to deal with uh, the first couple of movements, and uh, actually rephrase that, the first couple of sequences. The first one is where we essentially move across this way, and we do something like that. So uh, there's two different ways of doing that, at least two main ways of doing it. One is where the hand comes up and then back down again, and one is where the hand comes around. Uh, this, this movement, just like you would see in the same ancient double-handed movement. So we're only going to deal with the second one. The first thing is, if I'm moving to my right, it probably means that I am doing some little bit of body evasion. I'm, I might be like sweeping the leg as I do it, but it means that I'm moving offline from my opponent. That could be punching, kicking range, it could be grappling range, it doesn't really matter. So this is key, if I'm going to move that direction, I cannot let my whole body go that direction. I have to keep the cover hand, whether it's pushing an arm, a leg, or a body, I have to make sure that moves immediately in the opposite direction. So, so don't get caught doing this kind of thing where you bring the hand over here, you go like that, and you have no uh, interaction with the attack as you move. We want to make sure we have interaction with the attack as we move. So I do that, the bottom hand which is covering is going to go here. So then the other hand is going to take over, it's going to come all the way up, it's going to come across, I'm rotating my forearm, and then come down this way. Yeah. And the angle of my hand is going to be the same as sanction. So my elbow, uh, this, my elbow is in the same position, my forearm is the same angle, here, same angle, so try not to uh, keep this really close to you because it doesn't really have a lot of function when it's that close to you. Uh, remember we're talking about principles, not specific techniques. So again, uh, I move, make sure you interact with the attack immediately or the opponent, come across, so I'm essentially facing at 45 degrees, my leg comes up, I kick down without using any hip, I spring back, then I just go straight to the other side, same thing, the hand is going to cover or interact uh, initially with the opponent, immediately goes the, direct, the opposite direction that your body is moving, the other hand comes across, rotate the forearm, sanction an angle, kick or stomp depending on what you're visualizing, come up and then I'm going to come forward. When I come forward from that position, it's just the same feeling as you do against a hunch cutter. A hand and foot and moves at the same time. So the hand and foot they come in together, go out together. So uh, when I'm doing it, I'm this angle, when I do here, I kick. My foot comes almost beside here, and my foot, arm, do chew them together. From that angle. Down together, so we've got that body weight with the arm position. And the last thing is that in the, these positions, uh, again, I see I see different positions. Sometimes we're here, sometimes we're trying to straighten the fingers. No, it's a sanction position. Elbow, sanction position, center line. So I just all I do is I move my hand across, same height. Everything's the same height as sanction. And principles, not individual techniques. And the other hand, sanction elbow position, center line here. The uh, palms are flat, this cup has a lot of that. And the wrist and hand are on the same line. So I'm not trying to twist my hand to the front. It's a very natural sanction position. Okay, that's all for today. Let me know if you have any questions.